So I'm finishing up the set of videos over finite limits. In the very first video, I gave you a real life example of how much it's going to cost to run a specific plant capacity at 50%. Now we estimated the answer by using our table and looking at the limits from both sides. Of course, they met at 52, so our answer was 5,200. But now we know the official way to answer this problem here. So we use our computational techniques by substituting in the x value and we see what situation we're in. Okay, so if I substituted in 50 into this example, we of course know that we get zero in the denominator. That's easy to figure out, 50 minus 50. But also notice that we get zero in the numerator as well. So if we wanted to take the limit as x is approaching 50 of this problem, that tells us we'd have to do more work. Of course, the more work here is to factor this guy. So that's equivalent to the limit of x approaching 50. My numerator factors as x minus 50 and x plus 2. And my denominator, I just group together as x minus 50. My x minus 50s cancel out. That leaves me with the limit as x is approaching 50, lost my zero there, of x plus 2. Substitute my x value back in, and that gives me 52 which is the answer that we got by using the table, 52, okay? So now we know the official way to answer this problem, and so we have the official answer of $5,200 or $5,200. If you wanna see what's happening to this visually, I encourage you to do so, and I encourage you to do it by hand. That's a great review of what we learned from before how to graph rational functions, which is what we have here at Fractions. So I've outlined the steps that we had before. Find my y-intercept. I do that by substituting in zero. So C of zero gives me my constant of negative 100 over my constant of negative 50. Of course, that simplifies to give me positive two. So I have a y-intercept of positive two. I find my x-intercepts by setting my numerator equal to zero, technically the whole equation, but we can always cancel out the denominator. Now that factors, we just did it in the last slide, of x minus 50, x plus 2. So that gives me intercepts of 50, 0, and negative 2, 0. To find my vertical asymptote, I do that by setting my denominator equal to zero. So x minus 50 equal to zero gives me x is equal to 50. But we know that a graph cannot cross a vertical asymptote. So to have an x-intercept and a vertical asymptote at the same place, that doesn't make any sense. So this x-intercept and this vertical asymptote cancel out. So really, once I put these in factored form, I know that my 50s cancel out. And so all I have left is approximately x plus 2. Now I do approximately here because we know there is, in fact, a whole at x equals 50. All right, moving on to my horizontal or oblique asymptote. I don't really have to do that step anymore because I know everything cancels. And I really just kind of have this equation here, which is a linear equation. So I'm not going to do any extra unnecessary work. So to graph my linear equation, I just use my slope and my intercept. My intercept is at 2, and my slope is at 1. But I want to graph this in numbers that make sense for this problem. So I'm talking about percentage. So my percentage needs to range from 0 over here to 100. And basically, all I do is add 2 to every x value. So if I substitute in 50, I should get a 52. 
a little bit above there. If I substitute in 100, I get a little bit above, which is 102. And again, my y-intercept is 2 here. So this is my graph, but I know that I have a hole at 50, so I need to designate my hole here at 50. So there's my graph. To find my limit, it's approaching 52 from the left. It's approaching 52 from the right. So, of course, my limit is 52. So, I have finished up my real-life example, and I have finished up any example that you may have over finite limits, thus finishing up this set of videos.